All right, guys, we're ready to move on now to Mary Cassatt and her work that shows up Le Coiffure. Um, this is a work that basically showcases a new printmaking media, um, one of aqua tint that she uses with a lot of acclaim. Uh, you should probably take a minute to look at some of the resources that will flesh out the stuff that's on Khan Academy. You don't really find out much about her life, but without Mary Cassatt, guys, I don't think that you get Impressionism moving to America as, as um, robustly as it did. The French, remember, have an academic system, and they kind of fry out on this stuff uh, initially. They, they see it as something that's avant-garde, that's not part of the academic system, and therefore a lot of the early Impressionism leaves Paris. Um, imagine in the 20th century, all these museum goers now realizing, oh, missed opportunity, and they begin collecting alongside American and um, other uh, uh, institutions uh, to basically kind of make up for their loss. But Mary Cassatt was part of that transfer. She, she was from Philadelphia originally. She came to Paris to study um, that art, but then transferred a lot of it back to the U.S., and basically had a hand in creating an appetite on the part of American collectors for that kind of stuff. So we have a debt of gratitude to Mary Cassatt, not just for her painting and her printmaking, but also for being kind of a conduit between Europe and America at the time. So let me get rid of my face here and we'll move ahead. Um, when you look at Mary Cassatt, you got to realize that she was a painter as well as a printmaker. Um, most of her scenes featured domestic interiors or relationships between mothers and child because that was the world that she had access to and that she knew very well. Um, she, like Elizabeth Vigier Lebrun before her, had access to these intimate moments in the lives of mothers and daughters and mothers and sons and knew from personal experience what it was to be in the house for extended periods of time. She wasn't welcome in artist circles as kind of a relative newcomer to the art institutions of Paris. And it's not until she meets a good impressionist painter, Edgar Degas, that she's able basically to begin studying it in her own right. Um, here you see a popular piece um, that's known fairly well in most of the art history books known as The Bath. And it's based off of her exposure to Japanese May prints that feature similar kinds of themes and subjects um, where Japanese uh, geishas would take care of children inside these interiors. Um, they would have bold costumes and carpet on the floor that created bold patterns. So we see Cassatt similarly flattening out her compositions to show off that array of textures and create something that's really not so much a window on the world as much as it is composition. Okay. Um, with that in mind, you can see some of our other paintings here, um, uh, basically similar topics and themes, but um, they reveal where Impressionism was going at the time after a very important show of Impressionist prints showed up at the Ecole de Beaux-Arts, the School of, of Beautiful Arts in Paris. Um, one of the videos that I have for you talks about how much she raved to Degas and several of our other friends about getting to see the prints. You've got to come see the prints. So guys, there's a real strong connection between the work in the image set and the influence of Japanese artworks like woodblock prints. I really think that's probably how you will see a question framed. What movement was influencing Mary Cassatt to do what she did in her artwork? You, you really need to remember that as an influencer for the, the work that we see. The work on the right is a work known as The Letter and it showed up on an AP art history exam a couple of years ago. Uh, basically inspired by Japanese May prints, you can see that there's a flattening of the space where contour lines frame the body as part of the composition and the two, the background and the foreground are kind of blended together here. This is an aqua tint and it's a new process that kind of adds to what we know of woodcuts, then engravings, etchings and dry point, and then uh, lithography and aqua tint. So these are all printmaking processes that are going to show up. So you really need to be familiar with this one. One of the videos that I showed you guys basically shows you how this process is done. It's, it's a way for you to add color to a printed work that involves the application of resin on a copper plate. 
Um, it's a complex process, and I can only find a contemporary video that shows you how we do it today. I'm, I'm quite sure that Cassatt used a different technique than what I had to feature on the web. But essentially, it's a copper plate that has an engraving, right? And fields of color are applied to areas where you have the resin. The resin basically is applied and then heated, and it forms like a barrier between the acid bath and the copper plate. And depending on how you manipulate that resin, you're going to get fields of color that are going to be either darker or deeper or lighter or richer. So think of it as a way to colorize a print. And that basically creates a whole new world of possibilities. Now, originally, these prints look like watercolor a little bit. Um, some of them have the qualities of pastel. So it allows the art maker to create like a different kind of take on something that previously had been completely black and white. Um, so here you've got some typical prints from that same series, guys, that Cassatt did after seeing Japanese made prints on display. And they feature the same kinds of females in interior situations, either entertaining their children or caring for them in a bath, very much like we saw at some of her painting uh, pieces. Um, here are the two works that are really kind of side by side. Your work is on the left, La Coiffure, where the lady's doing her hair. And then on the right, we have the toilette, uh, the bath. Uh, this is the morning uh, ritual that the females go through. Um, there was some discussion on the Khan Academy article about Le Coiffure and the tradition that had been established in the past of women having attendants do their hair, right, for positions they couldn't reach. Our subject is doing it herself and reveals herself to be a modern female in a very asexualized way, even though there's a connection in the Khan Academy article to La Grande Odalisque and to Olympia's uh, Menes Olympia. Um, this is a very different take that's not necessarily for a male gaze. I think Cassatt is trying to experiment with a theme that's popular, um, but coming from her standpoint, it comes out completely differently in that we're simply gazing into the life of someone who's living in this modern world, not looking at her as a sex object. But um, she, she basically investigated prints um, because there was a real democratization of art going on during the Arab Impressionism. The Impressionists had begun to exhibit independently on their own, and they created a public art market. But she wanted it to be more for everybody, not just the one percenters who had lots of disposable income. And prints were an affordable way to get your artwork to be more accessible. Um, that was the same take that the Japanese had done. Um, you guys remember the 36 views of Mount Fuji? That was a, a calendar set, really. And it was meant to be cheap so that people could collect that artwork. So Japanese May and um, Cassatt's willingness to make this ready and accessible art is really changing kind of things up a bit. And, and we're going to see a modern art uh, market emerge with art critics and everything else, rather than having the, the salon um, kind of tell you who's good and who's not. Just to show you some scenes um, that probably were in front of Cassatt as she began kind of uh, thinking about what to do. Here we have pictures of, of females representing different types of beauties that you might find in the, um, the city of Tokyo, Edo at the time. Uh, these were specifically made for males who would gather these up and use them um, uh, for themselves and, and were designed to be almost erotic for the male gaze. The lady on the right touches the nape of her neck to kind of create a sensation of feeling that the male looking at her would also feel that he could um, enjoy visually. Uh, the reflections there with the mirror, we see the same thing used by Cassatt. So I think these were highly influential in the way that she came up with her, her formatting and her work. Um, you saw the bath was in there, guys. I'm basically focusing on the connection between the, the Yukioi prints and Cassatt. So we have similar themes and topics that I think inspired her work. Can you guys take a quick look at the carpet on the floor, the pattern on the upholstery on the couch or sofa, the wallpaper, all of those objects, they're reduced to patterns. And that's exactly what's happening in the right side of, of your picture here. Um, the plaid is not made to like follow the, the form of the body that much. I mean, we have harsh contour lines. So it really is about patterns, right? 
and how those patterns can be manipulated to create an image that reads as a, a person who's wearing on the right a kimono or a person who's doing her hair on the left. Um, so I think it's kind of interesting to see that there's such a strong connection between the two worlds at the time. We've looked at Mount Fuji, be Fuji before. Um, you might be able to work that into one of the prompts this year. And even though content area eight's not going to be tested on the 2020 exam, you can it's a work that you're pretty familiar with. So, um, I just want you to see and know that it's there if you need it. Okay. There's a real strong connection between the two to give you an idea of how we might see Kasat in the future. She's shown up on the exam a couple of times, um, here, uh, in 2004, before your new exam was made. Uh, we got this thing that was a quote, and we had to tie Kassat's words to the specific movement of Impressionism. So let's read this together. The following statement made by Mary Kassat in 1904 refers to her 1879 collaboration with the artistic group which, with which she is most closely associated. Our exhibition was a protest against official exhibitions and not a grouping of artists with the same tendencies. To which group of artists does Cassatt remark pertain, referring to the Cassatt work shown and a work by the one other artist in this by one other artist in this group, defend her claim that these artists did not have the same stylistic tendencies. So you guys can see um, the letter, which I showed you earlier, was the artwork that was shown. And you had to select another impressionist in order to compare um, the two different styles there. So <clears throat> Um, again, we saw her in 2010. Here, the work shown is a late 19th century print by Mary Cassatt, La Toilette, Woman Bathing. With which art historical movement is the artist associated? Analyze how the work incorporates the influence of Japanese prints in both style and subject matter. So you can see again, if you're going to see Mary Cassatt, it's going to be something that ties her to Impressionism, but also equally ties her to the world of Japanese May. So I wanted you to see those sample questions. Now, guys, I hope you're aware um, there are answers to all of these questions from old exams on the website at AP Central. You can look up the rubrics. You can look up what was said about them, and you can look up what readers were given uh, in the off chance that they were unfamiliar with the work. Those are great documents for reviewing, you know, the body of work by that artist. So I'll recommend that as one of the study aids as you get ready for the AP exam for sure. Um, I will stop there since the next slide is about an artist not in the image set, but ultimately we'll take a break and come back and talk about some post-impressionism as we move forward in the course. Thanks a lot, guys.